I'm Morgan Pekma, Editor-in-Chief of City and State, and this is Last Look. Today we're on location at the Downtown Conference Center of Pace University with Mark Messier, hockey legend, and Olympic gold medalist Sarah Hughes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. So, Mark, you are now also the CEO of the Kingsbridge National Ice Center. How did you get involved with this project? Well, that's a good, good question. Um, a good friend of mine had two boys uh, playing hockey in the city. Uh, recognized right away that uh, it was not easy for his boys to play and get adequate ice time and uh, thought there must be a solution to it. So he set out to figure out uh, why this was the case and uh, uh, we went on to address a small problem and we're going to originally build a, a twin rink uh, in and around the metropolitan area. That deal uh, luckily fell through and uh, we were shown uh, the Kingsbridge Armory uh, has sat vacant for, for 20 years. Uh, it was obviously bigger and more elaborate of a project than we intended, but we soon realized that uh, um, there was the need for it and there was a responsibility that we could uh, you know, take on to uh, fix uh, a problem in the city in new sports, especially in ice sports. And, uh, and that's how basically it started and that's um, uh, where we are today. It's been a long process over the last three years to get to where we are today. And, and Sarah, how did you get involved? Well, after Mark had come on, um, somebody who was doing a bunch of research for the project, his wife had went to uh, undergrad and then law school with my sister. And so he told um, the founder of this project, he said, I think I know somebody um, in figure skating, maybe she can give us some insight into uh, what we can include in skating or um, maybe she's coming for a meeting. So they called me and uh, once I heard about the project, I wanted to do anything I could to help because um, like Mark said, I live in New York and it's really hard to find adequate ice time and to train in New York. And so I was, I mean, to train for the Olympics, I was going to New Jersey every single day. So, I mean, that was a far trip. And when I heard nine rinks, um, I signed on. When you were growing up in Great Neck on Long Island, I mean, where did you go to skate? Well, originally when I started skating when I was three or four years old, um, I skated at a rink that was five minutes from our house, but it was a seasonal rink, so it was only open in the fall and the winter. So spring and summer, it was closed, and then um, we had to travel to skate. And uh, Mark, uh, initially, uh, Borough President Ruben Diaz, Jr. of the Bronx, had, uh, had, he had scuttled an earlier project that was slated to be in the Kingsbridge Armory because of concerns over uh, the living wage of workers who would be there. How did you surmount those obstacles in order to get the National Ice Center to move forward? We set out to fix a problem in ice sports in the, in the metropolitan area. Uh, what we realized that uh, we're sitting on something uh, much bigger than that. Uh, we um, had three things in mind. First of all, we wanted to be accepted by the community for what we stood for and what we were about to do. And what we tried to focus in on is three things, kids, community, and jobs. And uh, the living wage uh, was taken off the table immediately because um, we felt it was our responsibility to come into someone's neighborhood and become partners with them to create jobs and to uh, make the existing businesses around them better by attracting more people that will come in yearly into the Kingsbridge National Ice Center. We expect anywhere from two to three, perhaps four million people to uh, travel through there. So the whole economic engine behind what we're trying to create is going to benefit the whole uh, community. And we went in there first and foremost to uh, uh, convince the neighborhood that uh, these are the things that could happen. And uh, we became uh, very good friends and partners with the, the people there. And they trust us now and they realize that we're there for all the right uh, intentions. And uh, ice sports will be just another option in the Bronx, but currently there are no ice uh, rinks in the city of the Bronx. And it's incredible to think that uh, the Bronx is the seventh largest city in the United States without a single ice rink in it. So uh, we feel there's a need for it. Uh, but far more importantly than the, than the ice sports. The ice sports are only the vehicle to, to create all these other kinds of avenues that will open up because of it. And ice hockey and ice sports in general are not uh, very popular in, uh, with the minority community. Do you think that the uh, ice center being in the Bronx will help um, 
promote enthusiasm for ice sports? It's, it's a game changer in ice sports, especially hockey for sure. Um, and you say that the, a lot of the minor, minorities don't play. Well, there's a good reason they don't play because there's no opportunity to play. And uh, if there was an opportunity, maybe financially it would be tough um, uh, to, to uh, play at ice sports. The NHLs um, and ourselves have talked uh, extensively about uh, uh, creating programs for these uh, children to be able to play. Uh, we're donating a million dollars of ice a year, free equipment, free coaching for these kids in the community, to, uh, create programs for them, uh, free learn to skate programs. Uh, we're given uh, you know, 50,000 square feet of the armory and $8 million to, to build that out uh, for the community to build whatever they seem fit or deem fit for the space. And, and I think uh, because of that, uh, you know, we're giving the kids uh, the opportunity to do something that they've never had a chance to do before. To me, that's what really kind of resonated with me personally to get involved in this project. Is Ice sports is one thing, but uh, creating good civilians through sports is really what uh, inspires me. Yeah, and Sarah, along those same lines, I mean, both uh, figure skating and, and ice hockey are, are tend to be pretty expensive sports to participate in. Do you think that uh, the Ice Center will enable uh, generations who wouldn't otherwise be involved in these types of activities get involved? Yeah, well, exactly like Mark said, the first thing that um, when we were looking at the armory was to get accepted by the community and to work together with them. And Mark can talk about this. I mean, the community benefits agreement is really unprecedented that we've had with the community. When Mark went into, when we went to community board seven uh, and talked about our project, just the response when we walked in and then Mark went up and spoke was unbelievable. I mean, the community's really embraced the project. So um, that's what makes me so excited because I think kids are gonna be excited to come to the armory and not just do ice sports, but to create a community, um, a great place to learn, a great place to grow on and off the ice. And Mark, you've been involved in real estate and development in the past. I mean, did you have any apprehensions about the political side of this venture, the logistical side of getting involved in a $300 million massive project like this? Well, and considering it's a historical landmark building, there's always challenges, but, uh, and there's challenges no matter what you do. I think the importance of the project and the scope of the project and what it stands for, for the uh, city of the Bronx and the metropolitan area is always trumps the fact that it's difficult. And you wake up every day and knowing there's hurdles to climb, but you do it because uh, it's a big responsibility that we have for our children and the community. And uh, I think the, 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 the Bronx has really kind of, uh, you know, entrusted us with that. They believe that uh, we are come with three things in mind is, uh, you know, transparency, honesty, and truth. And I think uh, through that, uh, we've developed a relationship that's, that's very fitting for a project of this size because they realize the benefits it's gonna have for the people there. Uh, the New York Rangers last won uh, the Stanley Cup 20 years ago. I mean, do you think that the next generation of hockey players will or can emerge from the New York City area? Um, I, I believe there's a tremendous amount of untapped talent in this, uh, in this area and I firmly believe that uh, given the opportunity um, from the time they are first skating like Sarah skating when she's three years old and became Olympic uh, gold medalist, obviously she had the God-given talent but the tremendous amount of work and preparation that she uh, put towards that uh, w will be needed. I believe there's a, as a, there's a child in this uh, metropolitan area especially the Bronx that has that talent, given the opportunity and the coaching and the financial needs in order to do what it takes to get to that level, I believe uh, in 20 years we'll see someone from the Bronx come and make it to the elite level. But more importantly in that is that we can't forget about all the other kids. You know, uh, you know sports teaches us great life le lessons along the way. Uh, conforming team discipline, uh, commitment, uh, those are the things that you're going to need going out into the real world anyways there. So we have to make sure that we're not only catering to the elite athletes through the program. We want to be catering to all the kids that come through that program. Whatever level they play at, we get, there needs to be a home for them and continue to, to uh, mentor and tutor those kids there. So when they 
leave high school and graduate high school and hopefully go to college that they have the skills they, they need to to cope and to be successful whether whatever they do whether it's in sports or in business or just in life in general and Sarah what do you think of the conditions that need to exist in order for this area to cultivate the next generation of figure skating champions I think just um, once the ice rinks are built and we open the doors I can't imagine that the community is not going to come flooding just based on the response that we've had so far I mean, like Mark said about um, giving uh, kids the opportunity and the place to come and skate, a lot of the, and producing successful athletes or um, NHL stars, a lot of the most successful um, athletes in skating and in Olympic sports are not necessarily the most talented. They're the people who work the hardest. I wasn't the most talented skater. I was just always willing to work and I wanted to continue skating and I wanted to go to practice and I was lucky because I had the community and the support and the environment to do that. And for me that meant going every day to New Jersey, but I had a team of people who were saying, Sarah, I want to help you, what do you need to do? And that's what I had to do and I, that's what we're going to create in the Bronx. We're going to create this community, um, not just to um, help people become elite athletes, but people to learn how to skate. And if they want to become elite athletes or they want to go to the Olympics or play in the NHL, we're going to provide that opportunity as well. So what are the hurdles that remain before this uh, center can come to fruition and what is the estimated time of completion? Yeah, I don't know if there's hurdles, but uh, we, we've got just in the final in the home stretch of the uh, final approvals from uh, the city council and the city planning. So I think that uh, uh, will be done uh, before the new year and then 2014 will be designated just solely on final design of the building and uh, really kind of uh, one of the things we're doing right now is trying to f uh, establish the partnerships that we'll have and who uh, is interested in coming in renting ice and we had no idea going into this that curling would be a, a big factor in our plans synchronized ice dancing is probably one of the fastest growing sports in America figure skating uh, hockey, uh, short track speed skating, um, you know, free learn to ice skate programs. Uh, you can, so you can see nine rinks uh, fill up pretty quickly. Our 5,000 seat center bowl will have uh, be an event space where we can break it down and basically hold any kind of event that uh, someone would, would want to in a 5,000 seat arena from music to sports to basketball to tennis to uh, shows of any magnitude. Uh, Sarah's already talking to some folks about some ice dancing competitions, ice shows, uh, Disney on ice, uh, things like that are in the conversation. So uh, once we establish that, um, I think 2015-2016 uh, will be designated to construction and uh, we're hoping to be um, uh, uh, you know, open for business in the fall of 2017. And is a significant portion of the, the financing already in place? Is that? Yeah, that's been going on. And as you can imagine, uh, something like this doesn't happen overnight. Uh, this has been a, a process going on for the last three years. We've talked in many, many institutions. Our financing seems to be pretty uh, uh, concrete at this particular time. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, uh, for us, it's great because uh, people can, can really kind of uh, look at our project as, as being finalized from the final vote standpoint but also being uh, very uh, solid in the financial areas where we'll need uh, capital costs for construction and, and moving forward for uh, business. So uh, we're all set on all those fronts and, uh, and uh, we can't wait to get started. And so are you going to be involved in the ICE Center on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, I mean, what is going to be your, your presence at, at, the, uh, at the facility? Yeah, I mean, there's so many programs that I want to create. I mean, of course, I'm interested in creating an elite training base, but um, the thing that originally uh, attracted me to this project was the opportunity to create a community for kids, for kids to have a place to come, to learn how to skate, and to build the friendships and the qualities they'll need to have a um, successful life, to do well in school, to, go to, to stay in high school, to go to college, to get a job, things like that, skills that um, will serve them for the rest of their lives. So. Um, I look forward to being involved in a day-to-day -day base, and like Mark said about the 5,000 seat bowl or the events that we can bring, uh, synchronized skating is one of the fastest growing sports in the country, and especially in figure skating. And the thing that I like most about synchronized skating is that it gives you all these, um, these team aspects that 
you don't get in singles competition necessarily because when I was competing it was just me and even if you're doing pairs or ice dancing it's just you and one other person but in synchronized skating you need to learn how to work within a team and a lot of the things that you do are team building exercises and when you go to compete you compete as a team so it encompasses a lot more kids and you learn a lot of different um, skills so um, I'm really excited to bring that to the Bronx and to also give um, the National Synchronized you know, Skating Association and their, um, they have a huge organization, a place where they can call home. And Mark, are you going to be involved in, in teaching at all as well or in coaching? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Sarah and both and I will start up, uh, you know, the Sarah Hughes uh, Academy for Excellence and uh, Mark Messier. That will be a non-for-profit uh, charity organization where we can give back and raise money and help the kids in the community to do what exactly what Sarah's talking about. Uh, on top of that, uh, you know, we'll have our own Kingsbridge uh, organization uh, from a hockey standpoint, from all the levels through that I'll be involved with creating and starting because as we know, the kids in the Bronx aren't currently uh, uh, playing hockey, so that will be something. And But we want to be a center of excellence. Uh, we'll have a health and wellness center that uh, is unpre unprecedented in this area there that will uh, not only uh, the kids that in the programs will be able to benefit, for, benefit with, but uh, the kids that are studying in that field will be able to come down there and use their skills and all their players that will, will need uh, rehab to training to uh, health and, fit and wellness. And uh, so I think that's exciting. Um, and for me personally, uh, to be you know the CEO, I think uh, gives me an opportunity to be involved in many different areas there. But being on the ice with the kids and creating this program is certainly one of the things that I really relish. Mark Messier, Sarah Hughes, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. And that's it for this episode of Last Look. For more episodes, please join us on the web at cityandstateny.com.